Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster. Today, we are going to be asking the question, how is John Galliano doing at Maison Margiela? This channel focuses an enormous amount on Martin Margiela specifically, whose work propelled the house into one of the most influential ones in modern history. This series isn't part of the Margiela series, but if you haven't checked that out, it's definitely worth doing so. We're covering all of Martin's work in chronological order, one runway show per episode, and we even get down into the specific looks or even specific garments to kind of unpack what all he was doing at the Maison. But because of the intense amount of meaning that is imbued into those clothes while Martin was still there, there was a lot of questions when in 2014, John Galliano was appointed as the creative director of the Maison. And I get asked about this all the time where because I'm covering the work of Martin in such great detail, people are always asking me what I think about John Galliano since he started at the house. And uh, here, um, here, I guess, is the, the formal answer. Here we go. <laughs> Spoiler, I love it. When I first read about John Galliano taking over the Maison in 2014, I was uh, mad for days. How could it be that a Maison that was founded on these principles of anonymity and anti-celebrity hire a celebrity designer who was gonna wear the white coat and walk out at the end of the runway shows to like wave and stuff, it just seemed completely antithetical to everything that I understood about the Maison. Of course, at the time, I didn't understand the Maison very well and did not know that for the first six shows, Martin did often come out at the end of the shows to wave to people, which is kind of nitpicky of me. I mean, the anonymity thing is an important part of the Maison. Either way, John Galliano being appointed as the creative director felt like a personal betrayal from the Maison to me. I felt like my favorite art on earth was going to get diminished to this like cult of personality thing. And I remember that my mind first started getting shifted about this topic when I saw an interview for the business of fashion between Tim Blanks and John Galliano where John was discussing a lot of different things but among them he started going into great detail about some of the dresses in his spring summer 2015 couture season. After this interview I decided to lay off some of my preconceived notions and actually give him a shot and really look through the clothes and see what I was actually seeing there instead of just coming in hating everything automatically. And a lot of what I want to actually talk about today kind of the the place where I want to land us to have this discussion is the two most recent collections that they've put out. Because while I think that John Galliano was putting out good things at the Maison before the most recent two collections, I think that these are the ones where they have fully hit their stride because it can't just be John Galliano, right? It's John Galliano and the rest of the team doing some of the best fashion storytelling right now. Period. Bold claim. Bold claim. Wow, what a bold claim. Yeah, well, sue me. That's what I actually think. And I don't just think that because these collections are full of some really stellar designs, but more importantly, it's because I feel like John Galliano and the team have figured out how to properly build off of the groundwork that Martin laid there and kind of bring that vision into the present. The first part of this conversation is going to center around a series of videos that now seem to be the standard for them to be releasing every season called Swalk. These videos are actually what convinced me that I absolutely had to make videos about these and actually cover and talk about them publicly. They're super good. Swalk is a series of videos that accompany the Fall 2020 Couture Collection and the Spring 2021 Ready to Wear Collections respectively which is to say these might be permanent fixtures in the Maison storytelling moving forward. SWALK stands for Sealed with a Loving Kiss and you, uh, you fully feel that effect almost immediately when these start up. I was watching them in the den back here and my dad who has a background in art and design but is not a fashion person at all was just kind of walking through the room on his way to do something else while I had them on and he like stopped very rare moment for my father and was like what is this? And he like sat down and watched 10 minutes of it. It was crazy. <laughs> but from the moment these videos open up, there's such an addictive, compelling element to them that just sort of sucks you in and makes you want to be there with them. It really is, it's like the fastest 50 minutes that you'll ever experience. That was a five with a zero behind it, by the way. These are 50 minutes long, each. I kind of hedged it earlier. I'm gonna just say it for sure. These videos need to become the standard by which the Maison releases collections. They all need to have Swalk videos. What they've done is they've spent a few months concepting and designing the collection, and then they filmed everything. They filmed Zoom calls, they filmed fittings, they filmed their cats, they filmed creative briefs, they filmed, I mean, it's literally everything. They found an editor who welded all of this footage together absolutely beautifully and released what is now in my top three favorite fashion documentaries of all time. 
They're taking parts of fashion work that most brands consider to be priceless and crucially secret, and they just show it to us. A former mentor of mine told me once that the best documentaries are the ones that show creative process, and that's literally all this is, is it's just showing their creative process. I mean, the level of detail that they're showing us here is just bizarre. Everyone in the video is just so enamored with their own work while they do it. The, I mean, the creative process. And this, by the way, is the process that is the dream right now. I mean, teenagers in the 80s wanted to be basketball players, teenagers in the 90s wanted to be skateboarders, and teenagers now want to be creative directors. The jobs that they're executing are ones that we're all subtly curating our Instagram so that we can apply for them one day. But they kind of trick us in this video. They make you feel like you're just watching people excitedly do their work, but this is so much more than that. This info is incredibly secretive. The source of inspiration and especially the process of how that inspiration gets interpreted into clothes is not publicly discussed in fashion. You wanted to show everybody the charts? You wanted to show everybody where we're getting all this inspiration from? The old people in fashion believe that the only commodity that their brand really has to offer people is exclusivity and mystery. And without either of those things, the whole thing will just crumble and their business will be destroyed. But the values of customers are changing and fashion nerds are the ones who are taking over the industry. We want to know about manufacturing and textile design and dye techniques and mood boards and the sources of the inspiration. We want to know what classic codes of the house are being reinterpreted and how. We want to know everything. That's why all of these archival fashion imagery Instagrams are so freaking huge. It's because when we see these old photographs, when we see these people working and taking what they love and turning that into clothes, we then feel like we're getting a piece of the magic even if we can't afford to buy an undercover piece from 2002. 20 years ago, a video like Swalk would be unthinkable. I, I don't think any brand would have done that in the high fashion or luxury sectors. But not only is this video what people want to see in 2020, but this is also such a flex. This is like when Kanye posts pictures of samples of shoes that haven't gone into production yet. It's like, wait, why are you showing everyone that? They'll copy it. And the, the whole thing that the Maison is communicating by making this video where they show from beginning to end, they're showing the whole process. What they are saying is, go ahead, copy it. There's plenty more where that came from and I don't think you'd do it right anyway. There's apparently a lawnmower outside. We're just gonna keep going. Outside of what we're looking at here today in this the Swalk videos, I'm constantly building on this project of delivering the best fashion content online or off. If you value these videos, if you want these to continue, guys, support it. I am asking you specifically to pause this video Go down to the Patreon link in the description and sign up. You get exclusive content when you do that, but more importantly, you'll be a part of making fashion criticism and journalism at large more engaging. Okay, so the main thing I'm gonna keep harking on here is that the Maison is currently producing the best storytelling in fashion. The Swag videos honestly would be enough all on their own, but additionally, the Maison puts out an outstanding podcast where John Galliano just talks about each collection after it goes up. I mean, this is a lot. This is a podcast episode and a 50 minute documentary per collection. I mean, they've been doing the podcast a little bit longer than they've been doing the Swalk videos, but this is a level of transparency overall that I don't see in any other brand on earth right now. If someone can point me to another brand that delivers this level of transparency and storytelling for each collection, I'd love to know about it because this is a lot of content for them to be making just for a single collection of clothes. So the podcast really is excellent. It's just every season, John goes into the booth, takes to the microphone, and along with an orchestral accompaniment, just explains what he was doing with each collection and just hones in on whatever stuff was most interesting to him personally. Every fabric reacts differently. Every fabric has a different reaction when you cut it on the cross. So a dialogue develops and you have to be quite attentive because it's the... It's alive and it teaches you. You can't read about it in a book. It is so fascinating, really. It's done, you know, I'm doing it with tweed, like, you know, English tweeds, which react completely different to the satin back crepes that I'm used to working with. So there's a dialogue that develops. There's an authenticity. 
John Galliano, please read my audiobooks. I beg of you. His excitement for this stuff really sells us on it in a way that just pictures of clothes cannot. And even outside of the content that goes along with these collections, the lookbooks for them are absolutely phenomenal. Surprise, surprise, Nick Knight was the photographer that made all this happen. And these lookbooks take the idea of continuity and completely throw it out the window, which is a, actually a, a pretty important point for us to hone in on. Most lookbooks are just all in the same location. They feature the same characters. If there's kind of a narrative thing that they're weaving there, they feature the et cetera, et cetera. The, the whole thing feels like it is one collection of photos. But with this, we don't do that. If you were looking through these, you would assume that there was two sets of photos or even maybe three sets of photos. These here are just the photos from the spring 2021 lookbook. Right away, we get this very narrative driven feel to it. We see this in our brains start to fill in the backstories for these characters and places. And then suddenly in the photos, we've switched to one of the primary inspirations for this season, Latinx tango culture and the film Singing in the Rain and maybe a touch of Adam's family values. Someone on the Patreon pointed that out to me and I definitely see that as well. A few standard lookbook images after that that still kind of fit the mood but show off the clothes in a more direct and straightforward way. But then just for one shot in look 33, we're back to that original world that they first pitched us. Who is this guy? What's going on here? And then we're back in the dark, wet room with the wood floors. Emotional roller coaster, folks. But all of these elements as a single unit each season, the Swalk videos, the podcasts, these incredible lookbooks, these feel like they're powerful enough to be an optional replacement for a runway show. John Galliano actually points out at one point in the video, he says, I don't know how I'll go back to doing traditional runway shows after this. If you're ever looking to improve your John Galliano impression, you can just work on the way that he says the word artisanal. Artisanal. But I do think that that's really important that he now feels very comfortable telling the story of each season in this format. I mean, on this channel, I cover runway shows a lot, obviously, it's like my whole job. But I think it's important to clarify that really I'm about the artfulness of designer clothes in general. A lot of times the way that that artfulness gets expressed is through runway performances, but any presentation of clothes is a legitimate way of presenting clothes. When, I mean, when this whole coronavirus thing started, all of us had been looking for brands to innovate in some way so that we can kind of move fashion into its next era. And the Maison is one of a few different houses that I've seen that have really taken the challenge of doing this digitally and really flown with it. I also really like GmbH, Walter Van Buren, Donk, Y Project, and Loewe. But I don't feel like this medium of art needs to just be bound up into runways only. I feel like there's plenty of room for this, like, like every other medium, like painting and film. And I mean, there's a million ways for this medium of art to expand itself and at least give the artists different options for when they want to present their clothes. And I'm, I'm really glad that a, a big, big, big house that does have a pretty substantial budget like the Maison was able to take something that is pretty risky. Like we're gonna make a whole documentary that's gonna show the whole process, like the whole creative process, really? This is all very risky for them to do. And they've done it so well. Like they dove completely into it. There was no hesitation in the final product that they're putting out here. It's it's really great storytelling and I'm, I'm glad it happened and, and this is, I don't know. I mean, I, like I said, I started from a place where I didn't want to like John Galliano's work here. And he's not only made me change my mind, like that interview that I saw in, in the 2015 season, but now he's made it where he, like the Maison gets to be one of my favorites again. That's a really good feeling for me. I, I did not want for the best moments of my favorite fashion house to just be in the past, like for all of them to have been happening when I was a little kid. I'm excited to see where this goes and kind of excited to see, I, I'm excited for the next Swalk video to come out. Like this is gonna be really cool. I, I, I like where this is at. I'm really, really happy with it. In many ways, this approach to brand storytelling is an interesting continuation of the philosophy that Martin started himself at the house. Martin really loved this idea of bringing people closer to the art that he was making, showing them his process. The way that Martin showed that process was in a very literal way, similar to the Swalk series. His runway videos only half showed the runway shows themselves. Most of them chose instead to show the models rehearsing the team 
putting the clothes together or just cute moments backstage that added personality to the collection. Martin really loved half-finished clothes and he especially loved to show half-finished items that by only half-finishing them demonstrated to us how magic gets created in clothes. It would be like if someone was building a birdhouse and then they just stopped midway through and left enough tools and items in the half-finished birdhouse on the table and then they left the room and then if you came in and looked at it, you would maybe better understand how a birdhouse is made just by looking at the work midway through its process. Many early critics of John Galliano's work at the Maison was that he, he was bringing too much of himself and not conforming enough to the codes of the house. And I can tell you for sure that Margiela fans are ruthless about that kind of stuff. And I think that in the newest seasons, John Galliano is still bringing heavy doses of his personal eye to the house. I don't think he knows how to do that any other way. But he's an undeniably important figure in the story of modern fashion, and that by adopting this complex system of creative transparency through the Swalk series, the podcast, and these outstanding lookbooks, he's able to bring the voice of Margiela through to a new generation. Like I said, this channel cannot exist except for the very literal financial support from people like you all. If you didn't pause the video before, the link is down in the description. Go join the Patreon. You get a lot of exclusive content and that is worth it all on its own, but you'd be supporting the independent journalism that you love. I love doing this. I wanna keep making it. Go support it. And if your parents won't let you use their credit card, just put me on the phone with them. Moms love me. Go follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I love you from afar. Bye.